hottest Laker trade rumor right now is Lakers going after the Hawks, DeJounte Murray, maybe even Clint Capella. Also talk of them taking a big man at 17 in the first round of tomorrow night's draft or pursuing Jonas Valanciunas in free agency. Warriors say they want Klay Thompson back, but negotiations have stalled. And of course, Klay's father is a longtime Lakers broadcaster and former Lakers, so Klay to the Lakers remains a possibility. Golden State has until Friday to pick up Chris Paul's option on a $30 million non-guaranteed salary for next season or waive him so he could be a possibility for the Lakers, given, of course, his friendship with LeBron. So, Keyshawn, what would you like to see your Lakers do? It's a wish list? Is that what it is? Within the realm of possibility, please. <laughs> no, I, I, I get it, but I'm just Don't thinking... Don't say Jalen Brown. No, I'm talking about the wish list of the, of the, the players that Skip mentioned. Okay. So, because you got to start thinking about the money aspect of yes, it, right? In the contracts. I, I don't know that, that CP3 fits based on money, right? Because he's, he's getting 30 million potentially from Golden State. Then you, you got that. Then Clay, I would like Clay because LeBron has had success with guys that are shooters, and people are acting as though Clay is like a bum now, which is crazy to me. They like acting like he can't play basketball. Dude, average, what did he average last year? 18? Something like that? Yeah. Like, come on, he was, you know, whatever, because he got benched. But the intriguing one for me is the, the DeJounte Murray, Clint Capella combination, right? If, you, if we can grab that and bring that, and Rui, and D'Lo, and Gabe Vincent. And Austin Reeves. If, if, if Austin Reeves Fire. is in the mix, yeah. see you later. Mm -hmm. Okay, because just those two alone combined what they did in Atlanta, every category with the other guys, although, you know, Gabe Vincent was hurt a lot and all that, you just look at uh, combined, they averaged 34 game, rebound 16, assist, they shot 49% from the field. All their numbers is better than all those other guys, mm -hmm. okay? And that smells like enough for me to be able to get us over the hump. It really does. Now, can we add a clay? I don't know. And then the money. What's the money? What's the money? What is he looking for? He's looking for years. But it's got to be money attached to yeah, it, too. Yeah, yeah. So, you know what I'm saying, Rachel? Yeah. At the end, I like the I like the DeJounte Murray, Clint Capella. I like that. I like it a lot. The Lakers okay. absolutely have to take the key role player approach as opposed to the third big star approach. That will determine a lot of their success with this roster. Because a guy like Trey Young, another Atlanta player who'd been rumored to go there, that is such a big salary that you are skimping on the other positions. And under the new collective bargaining agreement, you're much more hamstrung about getting rid of guys with big salaries like that. And the whole three big stars, not much else, model didn't work in Phoenix this year. I wouldn't expect it to work in L.A. So they have to take the key role player approach. I'm not talking about guys, you know, who never play. I'm talking about the guys who make up a championship team. Is DeJounte Murray, Clint Capella, are those the two guys that you want? Are they the best available for the Lakers if they take that approach? That's what the front office has to evaluate. DeJounte Murray, 100%, in a lot of ways, he's an upgrade from D'Angelo Russell. He played a lot. Clint Capella played a lot. That'll be good for Anthony Davis. However, when you look at the numbers about DeJounte, look, average 22 points, five rebounds, six assists, one and a half steals, played 36 minutes a game, shot 45.9, 46% from the field, which is great. The number that you're going to have a problem with is the three-point mm. number, right? He was 36% from beyond three. And this just comes into, and D'Lo's a better three-point shooter, this just comes into what kind of game does J.J. Redick want to play? And if he installs a system that favors the three-point over anyone else and he has a mid-range specialist coming in, that is going to be a point of conflict. So it's a little bit about how are they going to match the player to the system, to who the best is available, but to me, they have to go this route. If they go the star route, it will be a huge mistake. But sh Skip, is, is DeJounte Murray's 36% because Trey Young dribble, 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 and here you go now, all of a sudden, That's I got two seconds to shoot two it? Choices. No, but I'm just saying, you know. Who's yes. <laughs> so help me out. Why would Atlanta trade DeJounte and not Trey? Like, like what? Isn't it an either or between those two? Or haven't we arrived at that impasse in Atlanta they where it's time to? 
Okay. I, trade them both? Let's say they someone, might want someone, to. They need to. For Atlanta to trade Trey Young, they need to find someone who wants to take on that salary. Yeah. I wouldn't. That's just me. That's, well, you're not I the like, only one who feels that way. Okay, but DeJounte, to me, is way more valuable as a basketball player than Trey Young is. He's six five. Trey's, I don't know, you say he's... You, I thought he was tall to like me. Six one or something, whatever. <laughs> I think he's six feet tall, but whatever. I'll take six five, and I'll take the steals, and, and I'll take the savvy and the toughness, and... He's, he's really good. He's another guy. I don't know how San Antonio let him or Derek White go. That's just me, but whatever. So if you could get him, that's fine. If you could get a package with Capella, but they're going to want a whole lot. They're going to gut you. They're, they're, they're going to gut what, whatever you got. I can give you Gabe Vincent, D'Lo, and Rui and some picks. Man, go, bye. Okay, but they're going to want right. more than want that. Austin Reeves. Yeah, they're, they're going to want Austin have. Reeves. They, they specifically just asked for, when, when the two sides talked about they, this they did deal this before a few the months ago, yeah. They said Austin Reeves, and that was the breaking point for the Lakers. Okay. So is if you look at other avenues, like Valanchunas, if he's available, I don't know what, what kind of money he's going to command. I have always liked him a lot. And if he could give you 15, 18 minutes, he's 6'11", and they list him at 265. He looks like he weighs 300 to me in a good way because – in, in the, the first round of the plus, he bullied Chet Holmgren, and yet Oklahoma City swept them, but he averaged 15 and 11, and they could not stop him when they really needed to stop him, and yet they still won because they're, they're just better than New Orleans. Okay, so if he were available, I, I would take him even over Capella as your back. You, you keep saying we need that other big, that, that big to back up. Yeah. Even though Jackson Hanks had his moments, he's just – a little wacky and, and kind of inconsistent. Who? Jackson Hayes, you, you, you're done with him? No, but that ain't, that ain't we, yeah. no, man, we need better than that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but he is, yeah. he is really athletic. I mean, he has his moments cool, where I think. but we don't have time yeah. to wait for that athleticism to kick yeah. in. Isn't he seven feet tall? He looks like he is, plays that. Okay, so you want DeJounte, and so it's like Laker entitlement, just snap your fingers and say, come, yeah. come, come on over here. We He's got it. He's a clutch client. What do you well, think? There you go. Maybe you're working it, baby. It All right. Okay, so you're going to have, like, four starters next year. You won't even have, be able to afford the fifth spot, right? That's back-to-back -back in the same salvo, the same answer. But I'm capable of using all those words, but there's a time and a place. And this is just me. You can call me Polish or whatever or stick in the mud or whatever you're going to call me. <laughs> that language is unbecoming of the head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers in, in an intro press conference. It's just a little surprising, and I'm not condemning him for it because I think he, he needed it to serve his purpose at that point, and he, he understands the audience because he's been, what, what's so it? Let me ask you this, Content yeah, engagement. engagement farm, yeah. yeah engagement so, farm, so yeah. if I was hired yeah. as the head coach of the Lakers, Skip, mm -hmm. and I got up there and I said, I don't give a what you think about me, what would you say? You? Yeah. <laughs> if, it, yeah. if I knew you? Yeah, like, yeah. you know me. You know me, so okay. if I... I'd if, say that's real raw Keyshawn. Okay. I'd, I'd say and that's... You would, that's and, who, but you would say... I know you off camera. But, and, but just in general, as a player, mm -hmm. you followed me, covered me the whole deal. You would say to yourself, oh, okay, well, that's... You, you're it, in character, you, man. You swore in your like, autobiography title. Yeah. yeah, so it's just... <laughs> yeah, yeah, bingo. But, but you <laughs> would look at that as authentic. Not it a would problem. be very authentic. And you wouldn't say he shouldn't do that as a Laker head coach. Yeah. But because it's JJ and that's not his persona, that's not the way no, he's carried no, himself, no. it doesn't feel authentic and real. It feels okay. forced. All right. I could be wrong, but I don't know if Jeannie and Rob would love that. I, I could be wrong, but just it's, it's, he, I mean, LeBron's the face of the franchise. And by the way, LeBron will F-bomb occasionally in public. And, and Was he at the press conference? No, he, he didn't. No. We'll, we'll he's, not get, official, he's not officially going to be a Laker next year. That is true. Yet. Good point. All right. So it, it created buzz, which I think he wanted to do because he's been in the content providing, well, how did the content phrase go? Content engagement farm. Engagement farm. <laughs> wow. That's Good. way out there. But, I mean, he's sold his podcasts and yeah. done very well, oh, right? Yes. Okay, so he, he gets that, and he gets the younger audience and that that's going to snap all of the, the younger viewers to attention. Oh, he speaks our language. So I, I appreciate that part of it. I'm just not sure 
I, I, I was just surprised by it. I didn't know that was in his repertoire. Maybe you know him. I don't know him off camera the way you Yeah, would. I yeah. mean, yeah. He, he curses. <laughs> there's, yeah. no, there's no other thing yeah, he no. curses. Honestly, in terms of the larger, forget the words, yeah. but the larger misconception, the, the, the heart of the question, honestly, I think Rob Palinka made a better statement about that than anything J.J. said. Rob said right at the top of the press conference, he said, NBA head coaching experience and NBA experience are not mutually exclusive. No, that's true. Yeah. And it's a great point because mm -hmm. Dan Hurley, who everyone hailed as man, that would have been a great hire for them, would have been a great hire for them. Yes, he has head coaching experience, but not in the NBA. Mm -hmm. And we have seen many college coaches struggle to adapt to the Almost NBA. Almost all of them. Right? Yes. J.J. Redick was there for 15 years, playing against some of these very same players. Mm -hmm. He knows how the NBA works. When we talk about situational things that he might not be ready for, they're not really situational in terms of do you call a timeout here or there because he has been mm -hmm. on the other end of it. And we heard him in the podcast being like, I hate when they don't call a timeout here. I hate, mm -hmm. you know, he's been through all of that. Mm -hmm. So I thought that Rob actually made a better case for his inexperience or any misconceptions than he did. And I do think there's truth to what Rob said. I think there is a category of stuff that he will be new at that it won't be an adjustment because he has already lived that life in the way a college coach. No, he, ha he has lived a life as a player. Coaching is, t I 